<laughs> oh, oh, hi, Jen. I'm just enjoying this cup of coffee. Welcome to another video from Flash Jazz Cat. And this video we've got a, a nice covering note with uh, a machine which arrived in a box a few days ago. Please find along with this note the Atari 600XL we've previously discussed. It has a fault uh, that when switched on it just displays black screen. I tested with the uh, I tested the PSU on another machine which works fine so it looks like it is the 600. Fingers crossed it can be repaired in which case I would also like you to fit the following modifications Sophia, Ultimate 1 Megabyte and Pokemax, uh, Side 3 cartridge along with whatever BIOS updates are required for this to work alongside Ultimate 1 Megabyte. Excellent. So let's have a look at the machine in question. And here it is. And as you can see it's a, a very nice looking uh, 600XL. Um, very good condition actually. Um, no significant discoloration. Um, I don't think anything that's worth worrying about. Uh, probably a little wipe down with the cloth is all it needs. It does look very nice. There's no tarnishing on the uh, console keys. Everything looks very nice indeed. So it doesn't look like it's seen a lot of use. It's probably been sitting in the original uh, packaging for years on end. A lot of these machines uh, seem to have been doing just that. So let's test it first just to uh, be sure that I can actually reproduce the issue. Let's see what we get. Turning it on. We get a signal, um, but no picture. So the TV does acknowledge a signal. No, it's not acknowledging a signal. So let's take the machine apart and have a look. I did forget about these machines is they don't actually have Chroma and Luma connected at the factory and this is an S-Video cable, uh, rather this one is. Um, so yes, I wouldn't have got a picture out of this regardless. Right, so the 600XL out of the factory, um, which I completely forgot when I started this. Now a Chroma pin on the video jack here, uh, and the NTSC machines don't even have this video jack. You can see on the board here, uh, this being a PAL machine, but you can see on the board there are soldering points for the channel switch which the American 600XLs have and they don't have the monitor jack because uh, there simply wasn't room on the back for both. So instead they have uh, a channel selector switch here for the RF modulator. Um, but your NTSC 600XL still has the solder points for the monitor jack. So very few people nowadays have any use at all for RF out. Uh, so the most sensible thing to do uh, is to actually populate, to remove the switch here and populate this with the uh, DIN 5 connector. That is going to necessitate populating other parts of the video circuit that were left off as well. But uh, there's a lot less circuitry in the uh, NTSC video circuit, uh, a lot fewer components rather, uh, because in PAL there's quite a lot of um, circuitry devoted to the colour clock, the colour burst clock, which isn't needed on to NTSC. So, yes, a lot of NTSC 600XL owners complaining that there's nowhere to put the video jack. There is, if you take off the channel selector switch. Uh, you can solder it right onto the board there. And if you happen to have, if you're going to put UEV in or whatever, you can. Uh, jump a UEV straight to these, uh, straight to the legs. I think what we'll do is we'll just uh, quickly wire up Luma, just so we can get some video out of the machine. I'm not particularly worried about colour at the moment. We'll worry about colour uh, when the machine actually works. 
So I'm going to attach a wire here which is luminance. Now this, another thing uh, that we're going to have to do anyway, uh, which I won't do right now, I'll do it later on, is this uh, chroma pin actually, which carries the colour for your S video signal. So you've got your composite here, ground, audio I think, um, and chroma here, you need to sever this uh, trace, it's actually tied to, tied to the ground pin out of the factory. Absolutely bizarre. I've covered all this before in a video I did on uh, essential um, 600XL upgrades. Um, but I'll probably come back to this machine later on. And this is going to be the bodgiest little wire, but it's it's not important. It's just so that I can actually see if there's any signs of life. Alright, so I'm going to solder one end of the resistor to here. There we go. I'll just lay that over there. Other end here. Whoops. Look at that, what a fantastic job. I'll stick a piece of tape under that for the moment. I'll do this again later on and put uh, shrink tubing and what have you over the top. Alright, so with this little modification in place we should have uh, some sort of video signal when I plug the thing in. So let's see what we get. We do now get a video signal because the no signal icon disappears from the TV. So this is a good sign. This suggests that the... I'll turn it on again. There we go. We've got a signal. But it's black. So I'm assuming the owner was using a composite video cable or uh, RF. So that's fine. So we know it doesn't boot anyway. So the delay line chip, um, I believe that's to do with RAM refresh and such. I may be wrong. Please correct me in the comments if I am. Uh, but when this fails, uh, it just typically boots to a black screen. So it's well worth just swapping this out. And uh, I am quite short of delay line chips, but as luck would have it, I've got an American uh, 800XL here, so I'm going to temporarily steal the delay line chip. So this, this machine belongs to Michael from uh, America, and uh, I'm actually waiting on a bit of sunshine so I can sort this case out. Um, so let's try swapping the delay line, because we know the delay line from that other machine works. Still nothing, so it doesn't appear to be the delay line. Okay, so that's one thing eliminated, it's not the delay line chip, so we can uh, I'll swap that back. Okay, so I think the next thing we'll try is a new CPU, a brand new CPU. And the CPU is down here, so let's get that removed. Cinetech. All right, let's power on again. Oh, and there we go, we get a picture. <laughs> so it was a dead CPU all along. <laughs> Very simple fix, be a bloody short video as well. Uh, so now we can go ahead and uh, hook up Chroma and Luma properly. And uh, the way is open for this machine to be uh, filled with uh, exciting upgrades. Um, I won't go through the um, video tweaks and such because we've covered that before in a previous video. Uh, but yes, that was just the pragmatic approach to uh, fixing a dead uh, 600XL. It's probably going to be the delay line. They're quite hard to get hold of, but somebody um, on... It's on Atari Age, actually. I think it's on Facebook as well. Um, I'll try and find the uh, GitHub page. I think it's GitHub. Uh, but there's a link to the project, he's actually made a small replacement, which is a few resistors and surface mount caps, uh, which does the same job as this chip. It's a drop-in replacement. So if it's not that, and it's not the CPU, it's probably going to be the RAM. I would have probably brought out SysCheck at some point and plugged it into the PBI connector there uh, to see what was going on. But I mean, the thing is entirely socketed anyway. If you've got a machine with uh, known good ICs on it or uh, some brand new stuff, 
Uh, it shouldn't take long uh, to find out what the problem is. So uh, yes, that was just a, a quick and easy video. I thought it might be a more interesting uh, rabbit hole type of repair, but uh, I should have realised there probably wouldn't be much to it. Uh, but there we are, one working uh, 600XL. The upgrades may actually warrant uh, a video of their own. Uh, I don't think I've put Sophia into a 600XL on video before, so uh, I might actually make a video about that. We'll see. So anyway, I'll wrap that one up for now. It was just a quickie. Maybe fill in 10 minutes while you're having your cup of tea. Um, and I hope you enjoyed it anyway, and I will see you in the next video. So thank you very much for watching, and bye-bye for now. Flash Jazz Cat.